Greg Gumbel. Coming up on Pens On at the Half, Clark Kellogg and I will have all the tournament news and look at Wally Zerbiak of Miami of Ohio after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports presents Pennzoil at the Half, sponsored by Pennzoil, specially formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. Hi, once again, everyone. I'm Greg Gumbel. Welcome to Pennzoil at the Half with our score at halftime. Duke leading Tulsa 53 to 23. Duke led Florida A&M by 39 on Friday. They lead by 30 at halftime. I'm joined by Clark Kellogg. Is there anything that this Duke team is doing wrong on the floor? Greg. You know I'm supposed to talk here. I'm out of adjectives for this team. I will say this. If you gave them a grade for every area and compartment of basketball, they will get the highest mark in everything that you do to win basketball games. We want to lock into one aspect of their game, which is the transition game. Everybody talk. On UNC Charlotte in the Midwest, Temple faces Cincinnati in the East. Miami of Ohio looks to extend its magic run against the Utah Utes in the Midwest. And Southwest Missouri State will take on Tennessee in the East. There have been many outstanding individual performances thus far in the tournament, but the first round contest between Miami of Ohio and Washington treated us to something very special indeed. Miami's Wally Zerbiak scored 43 of his team's 59 points, leading the Red Hawks to victory and into the second round. Bonnie Bernstein visited with him yesterday and discovered that when Zerbiak gets it going, he enters a world of his own. Zerbiak drives to the hole for two. Zerbiak. Dribble drive down the lane, in tight, in traffic, shot off the glass, and good. Here's why he's so tough as a scorer. Oh, Zerbiak again. Zerbiak gets it. Oh, my. Hey, Zerbiak's really getting tired. But he still launches and buries another three. Wally World indeed. An all-world performance by Zerbiak. Your nickname is World. We've got all those references to National Lampoon's vacation. You're, you're going to have to give me the skinny on the origin of this nickname. Um, well, the first time it came out was uh, my first game at, uh, at Millette Hall my freshman year. I shot nine for nine and had 22 points. And the crowd was chanting Wally World. And then um, from then on, Coach Coles, who's well known to uh, coin some interesting nicknames, cut off the Wally and started up World. Last summer, you played in the Goodwill Games. Your team won the gold medal. Who's the leading scorer? You. It was a change for me, kind of like the game yesterday, because it was in the national spotlight, and I was used to being double and triple team. And when we got to the Goodwill Games competition, it was all one-on-one -on -one play. I was playing with great players around me, so I was able to really capitalize on that and have a great tournament. Is part of you thinking that one of your greatest rewards of playing professional basketball will be allowing your father to almost live a little bit vicariously through you? Yeah. I think he's enjoying all the um, tension that I'm getting just as much as uh, I am. Great job on his part. Young man has been well taught by his dad. He had a great career, so I don't feel any extra burden to be successful on his behalf, but it kind of feels good because I know he's proud of where I'm going to go. And he's going on to the second round. It's Wally's world, and welcome to it. Wally's dad, Walt, started at George Washington University, then went on to a professional career. You know, Wally scored 43 of his team's 59. As they get deeper into the tournament, he's going to need a little more help than that. I think you're right, exactly. And it's going to start today when they face Utah. I think Utah has a number of big bodies they'll throw at Wally. He's an outstanding player, great shooter, and great competitor. But he'll run into some big physical guys in Utah today. All right, Clark, a reminder. You can chat live tonight at 8 Eastern time with our own Clark Kellogg, just as I do here in the studio. <laughs> just log on to cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online, enter the keyword CBS Sportsline. In Milwaukee, that's Michigan State guard Charlie Bell loosening up with a brace on his injured ankle. Whether he will start or not is a game-time decision in their battle against Ole Miss. That game tips off at about 4.41 in the Midwest. Also slated today, Purdue against second seed Miami of Florida at 4.46 Eastern time. And back in the Midwest, sixth seed Kansas, second seed Kentucky. Thank you for watching Penn's Oil at the Half. We will send you back to the Charlotte Coliseum for the second half of Tulsa against Duke. After this message, as you watch William Avery of Duke, Duke, two of his game high 16 points so far today. Pennzoil at the half has been sponsored by Pennzoil, specially formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. Right now, so Langdon at the point, McGetty, Burgess, Domzowski, and Nate James on the floor for Duke. 
Well, they've averaged 94 points per game in posting this 33 and 1 record. And uh, they will reach, if not surpass that today. You'll notice now, Vern, with Avery out, Langdon will take the point position, but they're not as smooth. And they're not as smooth in covering the post guard, uh, the point guard on the opponent team either. So that is one Achilles, one soft spot in their program that if Avery ends up getting injured. Tony Hurd has it at the point for Tulsa. Brandon Kurtz. Michael Ruffin has been blanked. He's still looking for his first basket, first point of the game. Harrington for three. Five forty-eight. Now McGetty, Eric Coley guards him, and Burgess. Kurtz come down with a powerful rebound that time. Harrington dishes to Ruffin. Oh, still can't get it. Still can't get off the snide. He averaged, I think, between ten and eleven points per game. No points, 0 for 3. And he's played all the second half with three fouls. Low point total for the season, three, one of the games against TCU. If you'll notice in the last couple of minutes, it's not that smooth flow with Avery out of there. Langdon, Ruffin with the rebound. A little bit too much static compared to before. I mean, great, great club out there. Right. But uh, he's just the guy that puts all the pieces together. And such an improvement since his freshman year, mainly in his decision making. Brandon Kurtz, nice moves. And he gets the basket from short range. Kurtz has 12 points now. 85 50, 5 10 to go. And what Coach Mike has done, he's made it now a half court offense, which I told you would do, not to completely bury Tulsa. James ends that thought with a three ball. <laughs> he didn't. He didn't. <laughs> he wasn't in the delay game. But, but they're not getting off the right. races. They're, sure. not, they're not pushing hard defensively up, up court to turn you over. Second game here, Tennessee Southwest Missouri State. Steve Alford's team facing the four-seeded Volunteers. And the winner of that game will get Duke next week in East River, New Jersey. That one won't fall for Kurtz. Chris Carrawell coming back on the floor for Duke. Trajan Langdon will get a rest. See well, what they do with him. They like to try him at point guard. Now watch. They'll give him the ball and try to get some action. What Mike, uh, Coach Mike is doing now, he's playing through this game into the next game. See, they got him with the ball. They want to use him as point guard. I think he's too tall for point guard. Burgess. Now McGetty and Marcus Hill. Constant movement. Five on the shot clock. Ruffin with a rebound. He's going all the way. And there was Carrawell back. Three forty-eight to go. A 38-point Duke lead. <laughs> Look what I found. <laughs> that hit the top of the backboard, also to score uh, the time clock. Eight ball corner pocket. <laughs> Entry pass with a pass underneath, rather. Count the number of uh, touches here. Look how high, look where it hits. The top of the backboard, hits the time clock, zip. And time now for this afternoon's data bank. Duke has the highest NCAA tournament winning percentage of schools appearing at least 20 games. And they uh, had that total today. Mike Krzyzewski's team back into the Sweet 16. Trying to win their third national title of the 90s. They won in 91 and 92, of course. Inevitably, I guess, Al, teams 
the, the comparison begins that uh, you think these guys uh, aren't ready to take their place with that team yet. No, they, they can't. You got to win. You, you got to win something. One of the shames that, shame that happened to Duke was they lost to Cincinnati up in the nook of the Northland uh, before the season. And no team can be rated above all other teams unless they're undefeated. And you only have with my, my the key team would be Bobby Knight. I think he did it in 1976. Six, right. And before that would be uh, San Francisco and UCLA. Damon Domzowski at the line. Now let's check out the CBS Sports Line stat of the game. That would be points off turnovers. 28 to 8. For complete tournament coverage, go to cbs.sportsline.com. Domzowski gets two. He had 14 points the other night. The young man who was a starter early in his career. And uh, one of those McDonald's All-Americans that Al was talking about. Here's a foul call on Simpson. That is the seventh foul, so it should be one and one. It is. Marcus Hill goes to the line. Booker T. Washington, Tulsa. Got the Imelda Marcus thing working. Does Marcus Hill collect shoes? Bought a pair here. How many does he have? How many sets? Nin 93 pair now, he said. Reminds you of that lady in the Philippines. That's uh, <laughs> the first that came to mind, yeah. 93. Added to his added to his collection with a pair of royal blue and gray school colors. See, you got to dig deep. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Twenty two fifty three to go. Ninety two fifty two. And Eric Coley will inbound right above us. You know, it's not nice to say, but what Coach K is doing, he's throwing a party. Right. You now he has the two brothers in out there. Right. The callback brothers. There on the board. He's not letting you score, but he's giving the opportunity to score. Three pointer. Carowell gets the rebound. And we'll bring it up. Carowell, Maggetti, Justin Callback, and Ryan Callback, the two brothers, both of whom were one time managers on the Duke basketball team, and J.D. Simpson. There's Simpson. Michael Ruffin gets the rebound and brings it across for Tulsa. Oh. McGinney with a rebound. Oh, is he quick? <laughs> Third try, Domzowski gets it. Yes, he is. Ooh, with no effort, no straining. Usually you run that fast, you kind of, you know, your, your veins are popping a little bit. That natural instinct to run took over, though, then, didn't it? He just, he couldn't hold back. He wanted to get down on the break and did. 94-52, Duke into the Sweet 16. They go into East Rutherford, New Jersey next week. That's a Friday-Sunday regional, and they will take on the winner of our next game, Southwest Missouri State or Tennessee. Our Chevrolet Most Valuable Players of the Game, Brandon Kurtz from Tulsa, 12.3 rebounds, and William Avery, 19.6 boards for Duke. Chevrolet will make a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. That's a Chevy tradition for 28 years. Now Ryan Callback, number 15, will inbound the ball and does so to his brother, the senior, Justin Callback. The brother is Callback out of Shelburne, Vermont. Well, you got your favorite holiday coming up, right? Oh, Wednesday, St. Patrick's Day. I want to wish everyone a happy, happy St. Patrick's Day. I'll be in the Big Apple at the parade. There'll be tens of thousands of people marching down in front of the cathedral. I think we should make St. Patrick's Day a national holiday. Yes. Why not? It should be, eh? You know, we... Well, you you are beginning the movement. No. Effective immediately. <laughs> And you're also trying to get Krzyzewski elected senator, I understand. I think he should run for the U.S. Senate somewhere down the line. He'd get all the votes from Wake Forest, North Carolina State, Chapel Hill, because they want to get him off the bench. And the good thing about him running for the U.S. Senate, 
would be he's not a lawyer. And the more guys and girls we send there aren't lawyers around that belt uh, area, uh, the better off for everybody. He's just going to love you launching his campaign like that. Well, down the line. Why? You and Senate. Start, start at the bottom. <laughs> Second round games coming next. Most of you, or the greater majority of you, will see Miami against Utah. Our second game, Southwest Missouri State, Tennessee. As our coverage of the 1999 Men's Basketball Championship continues. Greg Harrington gets two more. He's got 15. Ninety-four, fifty-four. Final minute. Callback. D. Bryant, walk-on freshman football player. He'll be a candidate for Duke's quarterback position on the football team. Now Carowell, up and in. Ninety-seven, fifty-four. Will we get to a hundred? No. We need one trifecta. Sean Williams, number 24 for Temple, uh, for uh, Tulsa. Put up a trifecta, save the coach. <laughs> There's a foul call. Michael Ruffin, just a wonderful career at Tulsa, but what a rough way for it to end. Held scoreless for the first time this season. Picked up three early fouls. His fiance, Misty Stewart, long drive all the way from Tulsa to Charlotte, North Carolina. Here's Harrington. And John Cornwell will bring it back outside. Williams, nope. Zach Bennett, Harrington again. Duke goes on to the Sweet 16. With a 97-56 victory, Mike Krzyzewski and Bill Self. Blue Devils had six men in double figures. Avery, 19, Brand, 17. Joined by Battier, Langdon, McGetty, and Jones. Back with Greg and Clark after this. Forty-one point victory is the order of the tournament for Duke University. The second straight game that they have registered a forty-one point win. They knock off Tulsa 97-56. Now coming up next, we're going to be sending you to your respective games in Boston and in Milwaukee. But right now, let's go to Armin Katayan, who is standing by. In back to, we'll get back to Greg in New York with Clark Kellogg after this commercial and a word from your local station. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Chevy S10, Dell, Pizza Hut, and by Goodyear. Welcome back to our studios in New York. Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg. The best we can figure is that you'd better put seven guys on the court if you're going to defend against Duke. Another huge victory. This one 97-56 over. Not a bad Golden Hurricane team from Tulsa. Of all the impressive things about Duke, probably the most impressive to me is the fact that they play their game regardless of the competition. They never play down. They play their game. They're going to play fast. They're going to defend and pressure you, and they're going to get into your bench with their outstanding depth. So Duke moves on. Now let's run down for you the games that are upcoming, and here are the matchups and the tip times. In Milwaukee, Oklahoma and UNC Charlotte will tip at 215. At 2.20 in the east in Boston, Temple and Cincinnati from the Charlotte Coliseum in Charlotte, North Carolina, Southwest Missouri State and Tennessee and in New Orleans, that, both those games will tip at 2.30, Miami and Utah Utes. Now in Milwaukee in that Midwest game between UNC Charlotte and uh, their the Charlotte center, Kelvin Price, has been bothered by a stomach virus. He was throwing up overnight. He has been given IV uh, injections, and he uh, his decision will be decided at game time as to whether or not he starts or not. What does that do to the 49ers? Well, he's a warrior inside. Double-double in their last game on Friday. He's a guy that gives them a presence inside. And with these teams being so...
so evenly matched, not having him at 100% could be critical for UNCC. All right. Now, those of you who are expecting games in Boston and Milwaukee, we're going to send you there. Those awaiting Southwest Missouri State against Tennessee, we will start you in Milwaukee. And those awaiting Miami against Utah, you will get started in Boston, and then we'll take you to the start of your games as they come around. Meanwhile, we continue to travel the road to the Final Four. Enjoy your games, everyone.